Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, we're in the kitchen today again, live streaming, and we're going to be making a beautiful, it's a lemon cheesecake, but it's a Christmas version of lemon cheesecake. So it's a little bit special. We've got beautiful raspberries, we've got some pomegranate, we've got um, some spices to go in the cheesecake. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's see who's in. Michelle, just let me, oh, let's get Rick and Michelle, come and say hello to everybody. <laughs> Yay! Merry Christmas, everybody! Hello. Merry Christmas. Rick's looking festive. Michelle's looking I think festive. I've got my hat on today. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Rick's going to come and help me occasionally if, if I need extra hands. Um, Michelle's going to be uh, looking at your comments. Let me just turn that camera up a tiny, tiny bit so you. So Not Elaine is out. Elaine is room. in. Elaine. Sue John sits in. Sue, how are you? Brenda's Merry Christmas, there. Brenda. Gordon. Gordon. Amy. Amy's in. Dan from Tells from the DW is in. Dan, how are you? And Brenda says hello. This one <laughs> is dedicated to you, Dan. Uh, Tells from the uh, DW. You can get across to Dan's channel and check him out as well. He's got a YouTube channel. He's the guy I met a couple of days. Whoops, that's going a little bit shaky. Sorry about that. Um, Beautiful. You're going to love this one, by the way, everybody. This is a classic no-bake cheesecake. And we're going to try and make it in from scratch in this live show. So I can't dilly-dally. I've got to get on. We're going to make the base. Digestive biscuits. You could use... You, you could use graham crackers or graham crackers as you call them, uh, but I'd suggest digestives if you can get hold of them. These are a McVitie digestive biscuit. Let's just bring the camera down here. We have to go a little bit quick because I need to... Um, whoop, there's a coffee machine powering down. An inopportune moment for, for that to happen, but it's all good. So. I've already started, we've got, how many grams have we got here, Michelle? Um, 150 grams, it's about five ounces. About five ounces of crackers. This is a little bit, we're going with an eight inch cheesecake. I've got a, a, a tin here, but I've actually sized it down slightly. I use the back of a, a clean rolling pin and just break up these digestive biscuits. It really is very easy. Let me just bring, whoops, sound over there. Sorry if I bash that. Um, come in nice and close. Just use the back of a... Don't hit too hard, otherwise they'll fly all over the place. So Amy says that I love cheesecake, my favourite. Yep, me too. And I'm actually more fond of a no-baked cheesecake than I am of um, a, a baked cheesecake. And I've got a whole host of them on my channel, from uh, mango cheesecakes to salted caramel cheesecakes. Everything's on there. It really doesn't take long. Look at that. We're just... Tap, tap, tap on them until we've got something that resembles a, a coarse sand. So that is the job done. So three, three extra ones there, quickly broken up. Now I'm going to bind these together with some butter. So I'm using salted butter. That'll be enough, I think. So I've got uh, measurements, Michelle. We've got grams, 75 about grams. Two and a half ounces. I'm just going to warm this, though, in the microwave. So Muriel says good morning all. Good morning. Um, Cal the gardener says hello guys. Left work early to catch this live this time. Beautiful. Uh -huh. Who was that? Um, Cal the gardener. Cal mate, how are you? Susan Hurd says hi Steve, Michelle and Rick. Uh, Tony Zach says good morning, afternoon everyone. Cheesecake, my downfall. Cheesecake, but very special this one. Don't overdo it on the melting. So I'm keeping an eye. I don't want to talk to you too much and end up with sort of burnt butter, which can happen really quickly. Brenda says, suggestive, digestive, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, classic Monty Python. <laughs> so that's enough. 20 seconds. Even though there's some little solids in there, I'm not going to go any longer. Otherwise, the butter will, uh, will scorch or burn, and you don't want that to happen. Normally, at home, I might do it over a, a little ban marie, but it, it, it works as well in the microwave. I want this base of the cheesecake to taste a little bit like... Um, a little bit like a, a gingerbread house. So, uh, because it's Christmas, I want it to smell a little, a little Christmassy as well. So, what I'm going to do is into uh, the biscuit crumbs, I'm going to add some ground mixed spice or pumpkin spice. About, not too much, not too much, not too little. Uh, a decent half teaspoon of spices, but a little extra powdered ginger as well. About a quarter of a teaspoon. Probably don't need any more than that. It's pretty potent, this stuff. Let me make sure I put the lids on the right way. Um, 
You don't need to cook these spices through. They're generally, when they're made like this for, for pumpkin and that, they're, they're pre sort of cooked. So now we take our butter and we're just gonna pour the butter in with the biscuit pieces. And then I think I'm gonna use my, my spoon, a wooden spoon just to bring that together. So it's now gonna start to resemble wet sand and it's gonna smell a little bit like gingerbread gingerbread biscuits or, or gingerbread man sort of mix so and sally says hi hey sally and gordon says thumbs up Did, guys was amy there as well amy was there earlier yes good day, amy, there. good day sally um so look if you take a little pinch of this camera back up yeah you're getting gingerbread it's really nice a little gingerbread taste now i've got an eight inch 22 centimeter i'm not sure um i'll do it spring form round for a spring edged tin so it helps 20. the cheesecake release so it's a 20 centimeter uh, i've cut out a little circle of paper in the center but what's special today is you want to take a little glass a little tumbler uh, similar to a whiskey tumbler like this we're just going to stand it in the middle of the cheesecake you want a straight, form. straight sided glass. It's got to be straight, but don't get something which is bulbous or, 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 or spreads out or spreads in. Got to be straight sided. So come down here. I'll show you what we're going to do. I'm Sue gonna... said, would you make it with ginger nut biscuits? Yes, I would. And we have done. Yes, Michelle, delicious. Loves, Michelle loves her ginger nuts. So sometimes you can, ginger nut can be a little bit, um, a little bit overwhelming. So, uh, you know, and, and it's already the biscuit itself has got extra sugar in it, gin, often ginger nuts, that's why they're so hard. <laughs> so you could mix it probably about 50-50 with, a, with a, a graham cracker or a um, digestive. So we want this to be right in the centre, but it doesn't matter too much. If it's a little bit off centre, uh, at the moment it does, it does eventually. But uh, So I'm just going to put the, the, the biscuit in here. Let me see if I can do this without getting in front of your your camera face. Who's for SDI says hi from Holland. Good day. Eh? I can't says, say, I can't speak in Dutch, but <laughs> I know it's something like a um, Guten Abend, but it's with a Dutch accent. <laughs> Maybe you can, uh, you can, you can write, and I will write try, it. Try and uh, pronounce it. <laughs> Dan says thank you for the mince pies that I made, that you took down. No worries, Dan. Mm -hmm. It was good. And Gordon says, are you taking notes, Rick? Rick is actually taking notes. Um, come over here, Rick, and show, show, show everybody your... You, Rick's got a, a notebook, and it's really becoming quite the, quite the reference for sort of Christmas cooking. It's um, quite full. Yes, it's, it's getting there. So, yes, Rick's taking notes because... <laughs> okay, you, you can do the, um, the um, hello in Dutch from Whisper SDI. Spell it to me. Uh, um, it's G O E. Oh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't hello, it was good evening. G O. G O E D E N A V O N D. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. See, it's like Guten Abend, but it's it's like to me, it's like German with a little bit of a you know when I've got uh, a little bit of. <laughs> no, I won't say what it's like. So Dan said, Rick's like the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's good. I like that. Good and good, good Yes, Whisper SDI says really good. Beautiful. And so I'm just tapping it down using the same method. I'm using the, the edge of my rolling pin because I want to tamp it down. And now I can look down at the centre of the glass and I can just pull it as close as I can to the centre of this pot. Uh, baking tray it's going to stay in there for the whole time until right towards the end so we do want it fairly central uh, i'm just tapping it down the love life says good morning from california are you making cheesecake i am making a very very special christmas cheesecake i want to tamp this down now another problem we're going to have today is because we're doing this for you on a live stream normally i would make this over a few hours and have time for everything to set but we're going to take a risk today we've both we've all decided all three of us <laughs> rick's here as well he's been part of the uh the brainstorm that we had yesterday and we've decided to uh do this in one hit for you but we're going to actually be freezing it between between um takes I could have made a second one, but we've only got one pan. <laughs> we, we didn't really feel like it would be appropriate. Um, so you can see now I've pushed that down fairly compacted. 
which is beautiful. What are you saying then, Michelle? I'm gonna... thinking these need to be washed because you need them for the next bit. I do. So I've I'm got a second them. bowl and everything. Like that. No, you need two bowl. bowls. All right. <laughs> Another little beautiful side idea that we've had is I've got some, some baking chocolate. You could use any chocolate you like. You could use lint, you could use um, Hershey's. This is just a baking milk chocolate. I'm going to melt it in the microwave tentatively 20, 15, 10 seconds at a time and I'm going to coat this biscuit like a chocolate digestive biscuit. I'm going to coat it in some chocolate. Never done this before. Don't know if it's a good idea. What do you guys think? Don't worry about too much, Michelle. I can, um... Yeah, you'll need this one. I will. You will. Michelle's preempting something that I haven't thought of. Mm. What are you thinking, Paul, Michelle? We need one for the cream and one for the cream cheese. Ah, uh, we do. We did, we, get, talk about it. we did talk about it. We're going to be whipping uh, up some cream. So everything today has to happen in this sort of hour, hour and a half live stream. So can you see there? Let me just turn that to you. There is the cheesecake base. It's got a nice circle in the middle. We're going to cover this, this digestive, this festive digestive biscuit with some chocolate. So Susan says chocolate makes everything better. Everything's better with chocolate. Absolutely um, Whisper right. Whisper SDI says sounds good. Uh, Arvik Kenner says good evening here, watching from the Philippines. Oh, good evening from the Philippines. And Gordon says, why are you using a glass in the middle? Uh, it is, Gordon, yes, yes, it's probably a good question that you've asked there, Gordon. There's a lot of stuff going on here that's just a nod towards Christmas, and this one is the actual cheesecake is going to look, when we finish, like a wreath, the sort that you would hang on the door. You'll see when it's finished what I mean, but it's going to look like a Christmas wreath. So it's, there's no reason, other than that, it's probably a bit of a, a bit of a far stretch, but um, that is the reason. Whisperer SDI says, be right back, I need to add the chopped meat to the hearty brown bean soup. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> now, I, that's, that's coming, you can burn chocolate as well very quickly, so be careful. Cooking chocolate often has a little more um, coconut oil in it, so uh, it, it, it allows it to go a little bit hotter than regular chocolate. But um, I don't want to burn it, so I'm only doing it sort of 20 seconds at a time, 30 seconds at a time, uh, because it will very quickly burn the liquid chocolate. So Love Life said I use Oreo cookies. We've yeah, made one with Oreo cookies. Oreo cookies that I've done before. When we made um, an Oreo cheesecake. When I made the Oreo <laughs> cheesecake. But Oreo cookie, the, the, the cookie, the crumb cookie is is not as rich as as a digestive biscuit is. So it's 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 not my favourite, but it does work really well if you eat Oreo cheesecake, which is on my channel. We'll leave a link down to the cheesecake playlist. Let's get this in nice and close for you so you can see what's happening next. There's a playlist of all the different cheesecake on Steve's Kitchen. My favourite is this one. And my second favourite one is the mango one that's on there, which looks absolutely gorgeous. It photographed really well, but not only did it photograph well, it really, 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 really tasted so, so good. So, anybody want to lick a chocolate spoon? <laughs> no, Rick, you can't. I know you want to, but I'm giving it to Michelle. Thank you. There you go, sweetheart. <laughs> see, see, Rick was going for that then. He was going for it. You can have some cheesecake, Rick, when it comes. <laughs> so, oh, so, here we go. <laughs> We're going to get this chocolate. This is a completely random idea. Um, I've never done it before, but I like the idea. You know, I'm trying to think how to make the digestive layer just a little more special. So we're just going to coat this over, and I'm trying not to get it up the sides, too much up the side of the tin. Uh, that was a thing I never thought about before I... Uh, <laughs> something because it could spoil the, the look and it doesn't need to be too thick either, so don't don't be tempted to put this on super thick because as it cracks when you cut it, it could damage the cheesecake. And nothing worse than having to eat too much chocolate, is there, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> nothing worse than having to eat too much chocolate. I'm sure not everybody's disagreeing with me there. So I want to get it in. So it's... Tony says, I'm in luck. I just acquired a couple of mangoes. That sounds wonderful. <sighs> oh, it's delicious. Love Life says, mango is so good. My mango cheesecake is possibly my second favourite cheesecake after my Christmas cheesecake. Unless it's not Christmas season, then it's my favourite. 
And Muriel says, spoon tasting is reason for baking. Of course, you've got to lick the spoon. It is. I'm going to put my glasses on because I'm probably going all over the place here. Yeah. So let's just get the chocolate, just give the, the, um, the split tin a little turn around and just coat that over. I'm happy with that. Rick, do you want some chocolate? I know you're not. Are you, are you avoiding chocolate at the moment? Or are you oh, all right? A small amount. A little bit or be all right, yeah. There we go. So now what I've got to do is ask Michelle kindly, she'll go and pop this, she's going to pop this in the freezer for me. Well, you can possibly see a bit more of me if I put, put it up like that. In the freezer for me to chill down whilst we make the cheesecake top. I've got a bowl, and as Michelle just pointed out, I've also got a second bowl. And the reason is, is because I want some thick cream, double cream. How's that, Rick? Beautiful. Beautiful. Really good. He's been abstaining for chocolate for a little while now, so I can I can confirm that's Rick's first chocolate in over 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last one was off the tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's been an absolute, he's a stalwart, of, he's inspirational in his ability to just cut down on things like that. I'm not having any more chocolate, he'll say, for at least a day. All right, so... So we, Dan said he'd eat that just as it was. How much cream are we going um, with Cream we are going reduced with... Reduced it down, 125 uh, 120. Grams? 120. So, so half a cup, roughly. It's about four ounces. That'll do. Half a cup of thick cream into a bowl and... Let me just pop that uh, over there. We've got Philadelphia cream cheese. Now, you do need quite a lot of Philadelphia cream cheese for a cheesecake, and I probably should have opened these ones up before I did the show, but it's all good. I'll give, we've got three of them, so I'll get the shower to take the lid off there. I had a blue spatula just there. Yeah, Rick just washed it out. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Lovely and clean, we'll walk dry. So we want to take all of this cream cheese. Now this is a tiny bit more than the recipe requires. Uh, these are 180 gram um, Philadelphia's. So they're slightly smaller than the square blocks. If you were using those square blocks, which are 250, you'd probably get away with just two of them. Um, and don't go for the skinny stuff, the light. Yeah, the... we actually cut it down a bit. It's usually too yeah. full. So... Don't go with the skinny stuff. All the is they replace all the good quality fit fatnesses out of them and put in some weird sort of aspartame and sort of, um, I don't know, something equally as unpleasant. So just go with the full fat stuff. It tastes much better as well. So we've got one, two, uh, and three. You know what, 375. 180 and 180 is 360, so you only need a bit of that. Ah, okay, so we're good. We're just gonna, you're right, lucky, <laughs> lucky I didn't go with the full it amount. Would, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have mattered, really. It wouldn't have mattered too much, but we have got a, a slightly smaller pot than normal. So, with my wooden spoon. So, Love Life is asking, is the cup ovenproof? I think she means, is the glass ovenproof? No, it's not, but it doesn't need to be because it's not going in the oven. <laughs> no, it's not going in the oven. We're not baking. We're not baking it's it. It's a no bake. Cheesecake. So, what I'm going to do, I think I, I'll put how much um, icing sugar have we got in here? Icing sugar, we have three quarters of a cup, which is 120 grams. 120 grams, three quarters of a cup of icing sugar in with our cream cheese. Hold on, up there. Do you want me to whisk the cream? No, no, I can do right? it. I can okay. do it. It won't take long. It's double cream. So, uh, and I'm just going to very slowly so I don't end up with the whole room puffed up with icing sugar dust. I'm just going to start to cream this together. You'll see. Initially, it'll take a few moments for the cream to absorb the icing sugar. Um, and then, yep, yeah, starting to come already. See, it doesn't take long, doesn't take long. A few moments and then you're away and you, then you can get some speed up and just bring that all together. It really doesn't take long. I'm not going to over mix that because I want to put my lemon zest in there as well. So I've got one lemon. I've got Rick's beautiful handy dandy zester here which i'm loving we've cleaned the lemon just taking any wax off of it but i'm just going to uh, grate the lemon rind so you want all the rind in there and i have to put the old spectacles on again so i can see that i'm not grating my fingers so oh that smells so good wow that is a good smelling lemon so we get all the lemon rind just the surface of the lemon just take it off 
get it in with your cheesecake. It's what they call the zest, isn't it? It's what they call the zest. Oh, it Chow's going all scientific on us there. <laughs> no, but I just, people <laughs> might not know, I'm just saying. <laughs> so yeah, no, we're getting all the zest in. This releases so much, there's oil in that zest. If you actually were to just stick your, your finger into that, your fingernail into it, you'll, you'll smell a little sort of puff of oil that comes out. And that's where a lot of the flavor is. It's much more flavor in the skin, by the way, than there is in the lemon juice. So don't miss this step. And Muriel says, so glad to meet you, Steve, Michelle and Rick, via this and my first live stream. Looking forward to enjoying your travels and recipes, young. Thank you, Muriel. So, we've got the lemon zest in there. I'm not going to, I'm going to hold a little bit back on the amount of lemon juice because I, normally I take the whole lemon and put the juice in with my cheesecake. Because we're going to set this a little bit quicker than normal, I am going to um, just come back a little bit. I'm going to just use half. Get those two clips out. <laughs> half a lemon. So I'm just going to get the juice. Yeah, normally you could use a whole lemon. You, you go with a whole lemon and put all the juice in there. I've just got a fork in there. Give it a good wiggle around. You'll see loads of juice dripping out of the lemon. I'm even being a little bit squeamish about how much of this I put in because I'm worried that we're going to have an unset cheesecake. Um, so I'll stop there. Pop that aside. I'm also going to add in some vanilla bean paste. I don't always add vanilla bean paste, but I think it's going to work nicely in this cheesecake. So I'm just going to take about a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste and drop it in with all those ingredients. Maybe a little bit extra because we can. Oh, that's nice. Yum, yum. Over in this bowl, we've got double cream. Because it's double cream, it shouldn't take too long to wood up. You can use a, an electric whisk, but really, he says, he said he should ever go. so hopefully, <laughs> it will thicken up fairly quickly. So we want this to be sort of stiff cream. So if you've got a balloon whisk, or if you've got a little hand whisk, and we did this last time, did we do it with the, um, with the electric whisk? It will go, it's something you go, I think. Yeah, it will go. It's double cream. It will go. I can already see it thickening. Yeah, it's nice. Be patient. <laughs> You've got to make your work out somehow. <laughs> yes. We want this to double in volume, so just keep going. You can ask your questions now. <laughs> Now's the question time. Now's the time I regret not getting the electric. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did offer to do it. <laughs> yeah, Michelle did offer to do it. But I wanted to show you how quickly it does, to be honest. So Sue John said that's a chocolate G. I think she's got she's pressed the space part, she's pressed the enter before she's finished the sentence. <laughs> so it's almost thickening there. You can see already it's starting to get to a point where I can lift it a little bit, but I want to go just short of butter with this. So Susan said, can you use thick pure cream for this? Um you want whisk cream because you actually want to get the air into it. See that didn't take long. That's pretty much there. If you go much further than that, it will separate out into butter. And you don't want to do that. So, shake off the uh, the excess cream. Anybody want to lick the cream? Me? No, no. Mm. <laughs> I love fresh cream. Mm, 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 yum, yum, yum. And before I add that in there, actually, I'm just going to mix in the lemon juice and the vanilla, just so it doesn't slop around too much. So Brenda says, oh, oh, and Dana says, what's the difference between icing sugar to caster sugar in the cheesecake? Um, it makes some, caster sugar can make a gritty cheesecake. So it's, although caster sugar is finer than, than regular sugar, it's really for cake making. It's not ideal for cheesecakes. This isn't cooked, so it doesn't get hot. So it doesn't, no, so, so use icing sugar. if you put caster sugar in, you will get a gritty, a gritty texture. So that's why we use um, icing sugar. So let's just get cream off there. What this is doing is it's making the cheesecake a little bit lighter and we don't want to over mix this now. So start to sort of fold it through with the cheesecake mixer. Let me see if I, can you see that everybody? Can you see that? I'm just going to pull it through. There's some little vanilla seeds in there now. Beautiful, that is looking really good. I'm not going to over mix it. I don't mind if there's a little texture in there even. If it's not evenly done, it really doesn't matter. With a cheesecake, if you had a big blob of fresh whipped cream, 
in a mouthful, nobody's going to complain about it. So Michelle has kindly gone and got the di giant digestive biscuit out of the freezer for me. It's already set up, the chocolate's already firm. And you also, it's icing sugar, confectionery sugar. It is, confectionery sugar, powdered sugar, powdered sugar, yeah. or icing sugar. Different countries call it different things. Now this is where it's going to get a little tricky. Well, not that tricky actually. What I want to do is get this, look at that. Look at that, can you see the seeds, the vanilla seeds in there? Hopefully you can. Um, I'm going to get this and just put it in on top of the chocolate cheesecake base and try not to make it too messy. But we don't really mind. Anything that gets sort of spilled on the side gets vacuumed up by Rick and I later on. Because yeah. we've got a special vacuum cleaner for that, haven't we, Rick? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So just tapping the actual cheesecake can you see? Oh no, people can't see. Let me just bring that in a little closer. Sorry, ladies and jelly spoons, you can't see that that well. So what I'm just doing is not putting it all in, but I'm tapping the cheesecake into the corners so I don't end up... <laughs> you also, it's closer please so I can grab a finger taste. Yeah, so I, <laughs> look, um, before I put it all in now, I want to tap the cheesecake down so it floods into the corner of the cheesecake and it floods into the corner where the glass is. Otherwise, I'm going to have bubbles. And we don't want bubbles in our cheesecake. So Lovely says, how many eggs do I need to add? There are no eggs going in this cheesecake, and you'll see why, and you'll appreciate why later on. This is a no-bake cheesecake. This is similar to a German-style cheesecake I used to have when I was a kid. Um, this is a love... Well, I used to make this um, when I was younger. I, I would have made this with cottage cream, cottage cheese. The only problem with cottage cheese, well, one of the benefits of cottage cheese, is about a third, I think, of the calories, and just as delicious, but it does need um, uh, gelatine to set. So I'm pushing it in, so trying to make sure we haven't got any bubbles in the corner. Whisper SDI says, well, I know what I'm making for Christmas dessert now, lol. This is a great Christmas dessert. This is one of my favourite sort of... This, along with my, my Christmas uh, pavlova, it's one of my favourite desserts. And I've reduced, this is my standard cheesecake mix, and I've reduced it down by a third because we've put a, a glass in the middle, and it should be just about the right height, I hope. So let's get all of the topping in there. Brenda says the chocolate will give us barrier to stop it from getting soggy. It, it, yes, it doesn't get soggy anyway, Brenda, it, it's, but it's, <laughs> it's going to give a nice barrier anyway, don't you think? Um, now, it generally doesn't get soggy um, because of the butter that's in the, uh, the biscuits. Um, now I'm just, can you see, can everyone see this, Michelle, does yep. it look good on camera? Yeah, just move this over and come over a little okay, bit. Okay, so we're just going to smooth the top of the cheesecake down. PYT Anna says, hey, are you going to eat it on, on the live? Yes, we are. You try and stop us. <laughs> and Whisper SDI says, quark tart in Dutch then. Uh, <laughs> Is it quark tart? That's that's a, a cheese a tart. tart. Quark is, a, I think, oh, cheese. Oh, yeah, maybe. I don't think it's a cheese tart. I don't think it's a quark tart. But um, uh, it could be. And we could probably uh, cross-reference that a bit later. <laughs> Sorry, I'm concentrating on trying to get a real flat top to my cheesecake. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, Rick, can I borrow you again in a minute? <laughs> Yes. So this is quite important though, so you're going to have to be very concentrate very hard. Don't make the mistake with this one. This is this is extremely important. Mm. Just come over here a minute. Okay. Okay, Rick. Oh. If you just come out, come into camera. If you could just take that, that, that? and just taste it and tell me what you think. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Oh, is that good? Oh, 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 yes. That's really good. That's your spoon, mm. you can have that. I'm sure it's yeah. I've got the bowl. Yeah. I've got a little bit in the bowl. Now, what we're doing today, and you don't need to do this at home, pop that in the fridge for an hour to two hours, and it will set up perfectly, and then I'll show you what to do next. I'm going to, um, I'm going to make something special to go on top of this, and then... When it's finished, 
much. It should take me about uh, 15, 20 minutes. We're going to take that out of the freezer and we're going to give a, we're going to try and serve it for you today. And um, I'm hoping it's going to work. It might collapse. It may stick to the the intense side of the tin, but uh, we'll see. Try and get it level. Michelle, bowl for you. Oh, bowl for me, thank you. Yum, yum. Uh, Worcester SBI says, I want the spoon. Because um, he says, oh, lucky one. That was you would have to wrestle it out of Rick's hands. There's no way. There's no way Rick was going to let you try that. Yes, that's right. We good. have a pomegranate. Yum dingity. Rick, you're not so keen on pomegranates, are you? Come over here, my I friend. I never used to be. Come over here. Seeds. Rick remembers, and a lot of us do remember, when we were kids, we'd have a pomegranate. They're a bit piffly. They're a bit of a pain in the bum. They, they're actually, I don't think so. I think they're delicious. But they're, they can, um, Michelle, would you do me a, a little favour, sweetheart, or just a clean? Are yeah. you, <laughs> I just realised the pomegranate I need. They can be a little bit gritty, mm -hmm. but they taste nice. That's often because they're over dried and they're over ripe. I'm hoping this one, this one looks quite sweet, quite sweet and delicious. We're going to be putting, we're decorating the top of the cheesecake with some pomegranate brick. Okay. But in the meantime, I'm going to take half of the pine of pomegranate. I'm just going to cut this in half. Oh, I should have got the camera down for that. But look at the juice coming out of there. Oh, look. It's a good one. Look at the seeds in there, dripping, dripping pomegranate juice, which is one of the, come down here and have a look at this, which is one of the most healthy juices, I think, known to man. One of the most healthy juices known to man. That is, apart from, Old Thumper. <laughs> <laughs> Old Thumper, it's from the Ringwood Brewery. Just a tiny bit healthier, I think, Rick. Than um, than uh, pomegranate juice. Yes, I think so. So I've heard. Yes. S Susan said um, pomegranates, tangerines, and nuts in their shells always make Christmas when I was a child in England. Yes, mm. me too. And um, and Brenda says we always got a pomegranate and a safety pin to eat the seeds and spit the pits that's out. That's exactly what. That's we what Rick was telling me yeah. the other day. You used to get a little uh, a pin and then you would do that. Now I think one of the things is quite often. Pomegranates that used to come into Europe from probably either sort of south, uh, from Spain, from Portugal, from, from Africa, from Australia even. From Italy, we had um, good ones in Italy. Great ones in, in Sicily, in Italy. They were often, when they arrived here, they were often past their best. And what subsequently, I think the seeds have dried out a little bit. You maybe wouldn't have got that ju juice, Rick, that's just come out of there. No, they do. Gordon says pomegranate juice is good for the blood. Oh. As is old thumper, I see. His old thumper. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Ricky, yeah. you having a bit? No, no, I'm good. You're not? You're going to go with your own? Dan good, says, yeah. yes, old thumper, pure bliss in a glass. It is. Yeah. Pure bliss in a glass. Okay, a little bit of uh, lift music in the background while we have a sort of <laughs> <laughs> quick slur. <laughs> is he going to enjoy it? Is it a mm. nice one? That's good bitter. Good bitter, West Country bitter. And Gordon says, any Baileys left? There is. Oh, Rick, you going to have a Baileys? No, maybe you so. I'm, I'm sticking with water for yeah. you. All right. Why have we got a clean bowl? Why did I, I force poor Michelle to get a quick, clean bowl? One of the best ways of getting seeds out of a pomegranate is to put it over a bowl like that and just bang it really hard. Oh, I'm going to show you down here. Come down here. We'll see what's going on in the bowl. Try not to just get over your shirt. bang. <laughs> Bang it, and the seeds will drop out all nice and whole um, into the bowl. So you haven't got to sit there with a um, pin, was it you said you used to Safe, use? Safety yeah. pin. Then. Safety yeah. pin. When they use. Yeah, you can get them. Look, look at that. Look, we've already got loads of them in there. They come out. Christmas You're just colour, knocking they? them out, and this is a beautiful Christmas colour. So this is the way I always get my pomegranate seeds out if I'm using it to make what I'm about to make. Um, they literally just want to fall out of there. It, it, see in the centre? We've virtually got most of them out now. Just bang it on the centre. Try not to hit your hands. Okay, and if you carry on patient, you get the idea. It's virtually empty now. There's not many seeds left in there. I'm going to do the other side as well. Um, 
I'm not going to use them all, but I'm actually going to make a pomegranate, what is it, syrup, like a, a, a dressing, a sweet pomegranate syrup, and I'm going to save some of the pomegranates for, um, for decorating. So we'll just knock these out, last few of these out. There we go. How many of you use this method rather than the pin? It's so much easier. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. You can kind of feel as the skin of the pomegranate starts to collapse. Brenda's helping all you out. The she, seeds. Said, she said a reduction, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not yet. Yeah. And more of a syrup. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm going to be reducing them down greatly during this episode, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely spot on again. So, pomegranate. Michelle's saying, don't get it on your shirt. Don't now, get it's, it on your it's shirt. dripping on the bottom. So and now, you don't have to. Pick them out with a pin. Mm. Delicious. Delicious. Gritty, a little bit. I don't mind it. I don't mind the seeds. So Whisper SDI says I use the meat tenderizer for you it. You want to try it, Rick? I'll try what I've yeah, I've got it. I'll try it. I'll try a little one. Clean spoon. There you go. Little, try a little spoon. spoon. I think you'll you'll still find them quite gritty, but nice. Chew, swallow those seeds. Mm. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to keep a lot of those to decorate over the cheesecake so it'll look like little jewels, little um, Christmas decorations. But what I would like to do is take some of them and the juice, and that juice, see all the juice there, and some of those pomegranate seeds. I'll try to keep the pith out of it if I can, because uh, that can be a little bit sour. I'll take those. There's a few little bits of, of uh, the, the pith that's, that's out, but they're easy to see and just uh, discard. So put them into a pan. Now here's where I'm sort of thinking. Did I have the um, caster sugar out? I did. So I'm going to go with, somebody mentioned caster sugar earlier on. I'm going to go with, and I'm making this up. This is a sort of a little black way. Uh, let me not not rush this and split the, split the caster <laughs> sugar. I should have probably got one that was already open. Um, I'm going to go with about a quarter of a cup of caster sugar in to the saucepan. So we've got about half a cup of pomegranate seeds, about a quarter of a cup, a little you know, a quarter of a cup of just any sugar, brown sugar, um, uh, molasses, Treacle, almost anything can go in here. I am going to use my lemon juice. This will just stop the sugars from caramelizing too dark. So the lemon itself will actually help um, just slow down the caramelization process. Why am I doing it into the cup? No, <laughs> no idea. idea. I'm, just, I'm just intrigued to see how much lemon juice I can squeeze out with just two fingers. I want about a tablespoon of lemon juice, nothing more than that. So this is a nice juicy lemon. Um, so tablespoon of lemon juice in there as well about the same about 40 is it 40 milliliters or 60 milliliters quarter of a cup of water i'm just going to heat this and we're only doing this whilst the cheesecake sets i'm going to heat on a high flame and it's going to if i'm lucky it right. I've done this many times before um, so it shouldn't go wrong but I'm going to actually heat this up and make a, a little bit of a simple sugar but with molasses with almost like a, a pomegranate yeah a coolie or, or um, a syrup whatever you want to call it just got a lot of that beautiful juice on there I'm just gonna give that a quick wipe off whoops my back but it does look nice and festive I'm sure you'll agree and he's back there we go I'm back high heat a look on it um, I'll go with the spatula again I'll go with the silicon spatula so it doesn't burn and we're just going to heat this and it's going to bubble it's going to simmer and bubble and bubble and bubble and uh, the water that's in there will actually dissolve the sugars will turn into a caramel and it will release all the flavours from the pomegranate ju juice. I am going to uh, then sieve out the seeds and we'll have a lovely pink 
I'm lucky, we'll have a lovely pink sauce to just pour over Which our we should cheesecake. Let cool. <laughs> <laughs> Got to try and cool that as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, shall I bring the people over here? Yeah. Will it be? Do you, you want to come over and see me? I'm not going too far, Michelle. Okay. I'm not going too far. About there. Uh, so then you can see, can you see the pink reflecting there? Beautiful. Got a few little bits of that, that pit in there still, just two pieces. Just take those out. Uh, oh, they'll come out. Well, they'll come out when I when I um, strain it anyway. So I have somewhere a little little sieve like this, just to take them out. How is everybody? Any questions? Now is a great time <laughs> for us all to have a little chat. Yes, you can ask your questions ask now. Ask your questions. So ask Tony Zach said, I don't have vanilla paste. How much liquid vanilla should I use? I imagine the paste is a stronger, more concentrated version. Um, you probably use about a, a couple of teaspoons, a teaspoon and a half, um, if you're using vanilla extract. If you're using vanilla essence, well, then it really hasn't got any vanilla in it at all. So um, uh, you, you can probably go with the instructions that are on there. Extract is better. Uh, essence is okay. It's just a, I think essence is made from some sort of bark or something, if I remember rightly. Okay. Um, so what's going to happen now is as the sugar and water comes up to 100 degrees Celsius, uh, the water is going to evaporate off, but also the pomegranate seeds, they're full of uh, water as well, but also the concentrated flavour. So all the water that's in the seeds is going to come out and leave the concentrated flavour in the sauce. The, the, the cooking of the sugars will break down the pomegranate seeds to a mush, like an overcooked potato, and basically release all its flavour. Does that make sense, Rick? It makes sense, yeah. I try to explain it in in terms that make sense to me. Um, so Ellen says, oh my gosh, I remember you. Merry Christmas, Steve. How's your holiday been? It's been years since my last post. Who's that? Ellen. Ellen uh, Wyrick. Love you. W-Y-R-I-C-K. Yeah, I think I remember. Yeah. yeah. You're good, aren't you? Where have you been? <laughs> There's no excuse. No excuse whatsoever. And Gordon you says, are welcome back. Gordon says, are vanilla pods expensive? Rick. I need to bring Rick in again. <laughs> Rick, come over here, mate. Are vanilla pods expensive? Very. How much did we see them for when we were going to order some for today? How much did it for two, for two vanilla pods? About £8 pounds? So yeah. Rick and I both thought they were. Mm -hmm. I'm going to suggest to you, if you buy vanilla, um, we used to be able to get them when we lived in Sri Lanka for, you know, they were like almost buying sort of uh, table salt. You could buy really cheap vanilla. If you're going to buy vanilla pods, they are worth it. And they're really, really hard labour to make vanilla. If you've seen the stamen of the, um, uh, is it a, not a crocus, it's a... Saffron. No, no, it's a, it's a orchid, isn't it? I think from the, for the vanilla pod. So if you see how they produce it, it's quite high labour. But I would suggest that you look online somewhere like Amazon.com. I might leave a link down. I saw some the other day where you can buy maybe 10 or 20 vanilla uh, pods and, um, and you can get them for a much better price if you buy them in bulk. And then you can use them more, you know, more regularly and have more fun with them. Because vanilla is one of my favourite herbs, spices, Spices, I guess. Spice, I um, it's one of my favourite spices to use. If you can use it a lot, if you can get it, if, if you if you're paying eight pounds, six to eight pounds for two pods, you kind of like you, you can get a bit miserly with it and not put it in all the time into your custards and things like that. You can kind of avoid um, using it as often. But if you can get them a little less expensive, then you'll use them more often and you'll enjoy it more. Sue John said, "I, I put the pods in a jar of sugar." Absolutely, and that will make vanilla sugar, which is great. Or you can take the pods, even after you've, you've cleaned out the vanilla beans from inside and put them into your custard, put them into your sauce or whatever you're using for, take those vanilla beans and put them in a, get a nice little presentation bottle, put some vodka in it or, or some, some high-proof alcohol beverage, whatever you like, and um, 
and just put the used, the used vanilla pot in there and it will make vanilla extract. If you don't believe me, <laughs> if you don't believe me, uh, we've got, um, this is a vanilla extract, Michelle, let's just check that I'm not drinking um, something toxic. Yeah, Madagascan vanilla extract. Yeah. Madagascan vanilla extract. So, if you don't believe me. Gordon says one pot in as is three pounds. Three pounds for a pod. Look, if I take that Madagascan vanilla extract, put it onto my spoon, a little taste. <sighs> That's vodka. That is <laughs> pure vodka. If I take these beans, Clean I'm spoon. enjoying this. Joe says, hey, Steve, Michelle, Rick, sorry I'm a little late. Little Hope you're doing well. Good day, Joe. Hey, Joe. Check out Joe's channel as well. Joe will be doing some great sort of DJ uh, gigs on his channel be between now and Christmas and some Christmas stuff. And also, he's got a Christmas release, which is going to charity to the homeless, Joe. So if you want to put the link down there, I'm happy for you to do it, mate. It might get flagged, but we'll, we'll let it through. Vanilla beans in what looks to be like a gelatine. Sugar and vodka. Absolutely. You can tell. So, just take your spent vanilla pods, put them into the jar and leave them and they will flavour, each time you use them, they will flavour up that vodka and then you have a really high quality vanilla extract. Look at this. Smells good. Smells good. Yeah, can handle's a little hot. Look <laughs> at this. Can, can you see that? Can you yeah, see that? Yeah. No, you can't really. <laughs> yeah, you just go in there and just show that. It looks like, it looks like almost like raspberry jam beautiful eh so i'm taking that off the heat now and turn the gas off that's done that's enough for me i'll let it well i let it cool down no because it might end up being tricky to get out if it gets a little bit thick so i'm going to decant it right now into something uh, i don't know what i'll put it into a nice white bowl um Rick, would you just come and help me? Would you hold that yep. there over the bowl? And what I'm going to do... Oh, that handle's a little bit hot. <laughs> so, let's just sort that out. How am I going to do this as a little damp? So, we're so well organised. Because I'm going to have to hold it for a while. <laughs> Thank you, mate. So, we're just going to push this in. Can you, oh, yeah, come, come in a bit, Michelle. Push this in. You can leave it there, Michelle. Oh, is it tilted down? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to push that in. I'm going to get every last bit of that juice because it will taste absolutely divine and heavenly. Now, think about this, everybody at home. We have made, or we will have made, the most amazing cheesecake. We've made a pomegranate syrup or sauce, and we've done it all on a live stream from scratch. So anyone that's got any excuses and says they don't have time to make good food at home, I would argue with you it's not the case. It's just a case of, of getting used to making stuff at home. I'm just pushing this now. I'm just using the back of the spoon um, to push it against the, the sieve to get all of the last flavours and sweetness out. Actually, I'm going to go with a, a metal spoon because it will be a, give me a little more power. Can you see it coming through the back there? Does that show up on the, yep. your camera, Michelle? Yep. So we're just pushing it against the back. Taking all those gritty little seeds out that a lot of people don't like, which, you know, to be honest, they're not the best bit, are they, of the, uh, of the experience. And that'll do. That'll do. Now we've got in here now a lovely little pomegranate syrup that we can actually just decorate up our cheesecake with. Do you maybe pop that in the fridge just to chill it? Oh uh, no, I think it'll chill. In the next, in the next uh, 15, 20 minutes that's going to be good. I don't mind it being a little bit warm. I'd rather it wasn't uh, too thick. You know? I know. So, questions whilst we have a little tidy up and then so, we're going to have a sit down and we're going to have a 10 minute chat Yep. and then if I could ask Rick to, to bring me a chair over, Rick and I'll do that. Into the studio. Brenda says, Steve, Michelle, are you going to miss the food when you get home? And I think she says, will you be recreating them? Um, you mean the, this food? 
Ah, uh, we never miss the poo. Do you, do you want to come in, Rick, and have a little yeah, chin wag? Questions for Rick, if you have them. Now's the time. Yeah. <laughs> so how long have we been going? Um, 50 minutes. 50 minutes. 50 minutes. We've made a cheesecake. We've made a sauce. We've had a pint. Yeah, I've lost my bottle actually. I've got a water bottle. All right, so so Rick's going lightweight. He's going lightweight. Two in a glass. Blow me above me. I'm just going to post the videos behind me. Yes. You're going to go for it, Rick? Going to have a glass of water? Going to go for it. Have a mail. So Susan said, anyone else having buffering issues? And Gordon said, no buffer, but not the best picture. And my picture's got a bit. Has it? Yes. All right, let's have a little look. Let's see what, see what's uh, I think we're all good. Now the connection should be okay. Let's okay. just see if it picks up everybody. Is everybody else getting, how many people are in? 100. 100 people in, hit the thumbs up for Michelle. We want 100 thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, you've only got 39 guys. 105 of you are in now and I've got 39 thumbs up. Adam's L, <laughs> the nature's, nature's, <laughs> nature's, yes. nature's, I don't know. Fill in the blank. <laughs> Water. Fill in the blank. Sue John says, "What's for dinner?" Uh, tonight, Sue John. I this morning we Rick and I, by the way, and Michelle. Sorry, come in, come in, Michelle. Oh no, you've got to do the. I'm the sorry. I'm, I'm happy. We're with all you. actually trying to get through the whole Christmas season without putting on weight at the end of Christmas. So what we're doing is we're alternate day fasting at the moment. So for example, um, three days of the week. I'm making up a, a, a recipe book for Rick and a recipe book for us of, of a whole day of eating that will keep you under 700 or 900 calories, depending if you're a lady or a man, keeping you under a certain amount of calories. So yesterday was a fast day for us. We had delicious. We had f so nice. fresh yeah. pasta, fresh tagliatelle pasta with a beautiful chicken mushroom sauce, which was reducing calories by using um, Greek yogurt rather than using um, uh, the cream that I would normally use. It was good, wasn't it? It was really good. Yeah, yeah so yeah. fresh tagliatelle uh, um, made with just eggs and flour and salt. And we had a big mound of it. And it was only about 500 calories, Michelle, yes, was it? Yeah, yes. about 500 calories. And that really filled us up in the evening. Um, in the morning, we have a, an overnight oats or an oatmeal type uh, dish, uh, which is really simple to make. And then we have another sort of late meal in the evening, which is can vary, but quite often ends up being oatmeal again. Uh, and we've, we're stuffed at the end of the day, but we've only had under 900 calories. So the next day we eat what we want. So today is an eat what you want day. What was the question then? And why did I start going down that path? Because um, somebody asked what we were having for dinner. Oh. <laughs> Sue John's asked what's for dinner. <laughs> so Sue, this morning when I woke up, or maybe even during the night because I was dreaming about food, I said to Rick, do you fancy some Thai food? So tonight, later on, we're going to have uh, Khao Pak Gai. Yes. So if you know what that is, you can comment in the uh, in, in the uh, comments down below. We're going to have Khao Pak Gai. Um, we were going to have a Penang curry as well, but we th think we're probably going to be overdoing it with the cheesecake and the Penang mm -hmm. curry. Um, so we, we wanted something with a little bit of kick, a little bit of spice in it. So we're going with the cow pot move, um, which I'm really looking forward to cooking. And actually you'll see on the, on the uh, stove top back here is a pre-cooked rice that I'm letting cool down uh, to do, oh, I'm giving away what it is. <laughs> we'll need it for the recipe. So Muriel says, will this recipe be on your kitchen site? Um, which recipe? Um, I think the, um, the cheesecake, cheesecake will be, already is. Uh, you can check it out. I think, Michelle, have you put the link I, in I put the yet? link in, but that's the one where you um, actually use the cottage cheese. I'm going to put a link in here now, which is the mango cheesecake, so which you've just adapted that one for this one. So you can use either There's one. a cheesecake list down there, and you can, you can check it all out. So any questions from myself or Rick um, before we get... Do the big reveal on the cheesecake. Have you ever tried that um, vanilla? Not, not raw. Okay, I'll show you. You okay. will be surprised how much this just tastes like. Actually, I wouldn't mind doing a comparison between that and the, and the bean paste. I, kn I knew he'd want both. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, even before he said it, I knew he'd want both. Who wouldn't? Mm. Who wouldn't? Well, I've never used the bean paste before. I've only ever used the... So, this essence. is essence. This is a Madagascan, and Madagascar, by the way, is a great place. So just try yeah. that, Rick. 
You can tell me what you taste apart from vanilla. Whoa. Yes, that's definitely pure it's vodka. Just vodka. It's, just pure, <laughs> it's not even vodka, it's just pure alcohol. It's basically, oh. it's not pure alcohol because that, that would, that would alcohol. literally, it is, it gets there. So they actually do use, um, uh, mostly for van vanilla e es extract, they do use um, uh, a form of, of uh, vodka. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes um, they will use uh, grappa or something like that. In Italy, they'll use maybe grappa, which is a, de a fermented um, grape juice. Now, this one as well, Rick, uh, I'll give you a bit more of this one. I didn't give you much of that because it's, it would, it, it, <laughs> it's going blow my head off. No, this, this one won't. This one, what, I'm, what, you, what I want you to see if you can taste. See if you can taste the alcohol. It will be very much masked by the sugar, so it will, you'll get a lot of sweetness, but see if you can still taste the alcohol. Oh, that's so much smoother, yeah. creamier. Sugar. <laughs> yeah, you've got the sugar, and you can taste the alcohol, but it's not as in your face. No, no. It's, it's just something, oh, it's like, it's almost like I've got a custard. Oh, that is nice. I can't see that staying around long. In All that is is suspending, but this one actually, this one is extract, so they've taken vanilla pods and they've made this into a, an, ex, an extract. But this one, they've taken the seeds out of the vanilla and they've suspended it in um, a guaya gum, maybe with a, with a vodka or possibly one other sort of like gelatine type thing. You've maybe got an aga aga or something like that. You've got a much longer, stronger vanilla aftertaste as well with that one. I didn't give you much um, of that though, to be honest. If you well, had a whole teaspoon, you probably would have, uh, you would have fell off your, your stool. Yeah. It's, 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 as you say, it's pretty high. You, it, it would be an expensive way of cleaning your countertops down, but it, it, could, literally, mm. it could literally clean down metallic surfaces. Mm. So, Leah Iamba says, hello, host. Good day, Leah. Um, so, um, the one who plays is suggesting try to create some of your most popular uploads, but make one version with the cheapest ingredients available locally to you and one version with the most expensive ingredients to see if there's any discernible difference in quality and taste. Um, that's a very good idea. And I do sometimes um, tell you in recipes, like I've done um, Christmas pudding, a cheap version and a, and a luxury version. And I've also done minced meat luxury and a cheaper version of minced meat if you if you check out my channel and there, there truly is quite a difference but not a lot of difference you know for instance in the luxury minced meat i use apricots and cranberries and a lot more glacé cherries and, and and that sort of thing so they're rich more expensive fruits than in the cheaper one um but the overall flavor is is not massively different um but quite different i i think it's worth it but that's a good great idea maybe the, one of the problems we have is we're, we've been traveling a long time now. We're thinking of stopping for a little while and doing some cooking. We're, we're, we're certainly uh, redue a little bit of a stop. Um, but even when we do stop, it would be finding the ingredients. Um, not every country has everything. So, yes. So Susan says, Noted. now we'll have to go and taste my vanilla extract and vanilla bean paste. <laughs> <laughs> Susan. Susan. Yes. Susan, do it now and tell us what you think. <laughs> and Leah says, um, hello from Nairobi, Kenya. Hello. Who's that? Um, Leah Aimba. Hi, Leah. How are you? Merry Christmas to everybody. And if you don't, if you don't um, celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a That's little. That's the way we rock. Muriel says, "Side note for Rick. Thanks for your meditations." Oh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Rick actually has a wonderful meditation channel called The Honest Guys. And if you haven't checked that out, I'll put a link down below as well. And you can go and check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you very thank much. Rick, yeah, I can't, I, I can't see my, let's talk, my deep voice. Let's talk about meditation. meditation. Mm. Mm. Let's, uh, <clears throat> we're going to go all ASMR on you now. Mm -hmm. Everything from this point out will be ASMR. <laughs> That's not ASMR. <anything. laughs> Need some crinkly, uh, some crinkly, yeah, crinkly, yeah, yeah something. Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> Leah says thumbs up for the host and Merry Christmas to you all. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.
Yes, bon Noël, Feliz, Feliz Navidad. Thumbs up. We've only got 53 and there's 118 oh, if you're watching. And uh, that. German, what is uh, uh, Vorliga Weihnacht? <laughs> Bon Noël well, is in French. Oh, uh, and Chinese is, uh, what's Chinese? Real quick, quick. Help oh. me out with that one. Sindan Phai Lok. Sindan Phai Lok. You were just getting so. to that when you were tipping so. your tongue, Rick. I know. <laughs> oh, what? So we've got Feliz Navidad, uh, Bon Noël. Um, Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Song, yeah. Feliz Navidad. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. You'll get a Right. <laughs> I know, because I'm, yeah, I'm flat. Because you're pitch, pitch perfect. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, pull off straight off uh, the air. And uh, Sindan Phailok, which basically in Chinese means, um, Sindan I think means Saint Christmas or something like that, uh, if I remember rightly. So uh, to all my, and that's really only Cantonese as well, by the way, I don't know the correct pronunciation in Mandarin, but for those of you that are watching that might uh, speak um, Cantonese, Sindan Phailok. Have a great Christmas. Hey. Say it, Rick. What he Sin says. Dan. Sin Dan. Phi Lok. <laughs> Joey says, writing these songs down now, ha ha, for later use. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Leah says, I'm new in your channel host and I love everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, I'm going to ask Michelle just to go and have a little tap on the cheesecake and see how do you think it's mm. how's well, it coming along? Shall we can go another ten minutes. Tap on it, like, like, like a loaf. Getting there. Get there. Don't, don't bring it just yet, but I think we'll leave it another 10 minutes because Rick and I will be salivating. We are going to decorate the top of this cheesecake in a very special way. Nothing, nothing. Yeah, well, no, it is special. Just wait and see. We've got, it's going to be fruit. Back to the glass and has... <laughs> is it still quite soft? Um, it's softish, yeah. Softish. Mm -hmm. Give it another 10. Have another little chat. Ask yeah. some questions. I don't want to run a knife around it and sort of destroy mm. uh, destroy our nice new um, uh, spring form yes. uh, pot. But, uh, okay, whilst we wait for the cheesecake to set. Okay, so Lohit Joshi says, hang on. hi. Hang on. Uh, hang on, go on. Hang on. No. <laughs> Susan has been to taste her vanilla bean paste. And she's now oh. flat out on the floor. She says, she says, <laughs> she says the taste of the alcohol was stronger in the extract, but boy, it was yummy, and the paste was too sweet for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's, uh, Susan, and she's written that all in sort of like uh, garbled the voice. Susan, Susan, you have a sit down. Rick and, Rick and I. I don't want anybody when that, you know, <laughs> later on go thinking they're little sort of, they are actually like those little... Um, Alcohol oh, miniatures. Yes. Yeah. 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 Little bit of this. Actually, no. Please don't do that. Uh, uh, children don't do that, <laughs> and adults also don't do it because it could actually be rubbing alcohol, as Rick said. I don't. I can't guarantee you this is high quality um, produce because they they can get away with putting almost any cheap alcohol in there. But I imagine this one is is, is quite good. It's quite good. <laughs> so Lohit Joshi says good evening from Austria. Good evening, good evening, wie geht's? And T Milks says Merry Christmas to you all. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you all. We love Austria, don't we? We Michelle? do, yes. But you, one day, if you ever get to go to Austria, one, one day, one I've day. got my hand on Rick's, <laughs> Rick's, Rick's knee. One day, if you ever go to Austria, it's a beautiful country, man. It's so pretty. Um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the prettier countries in, in Europe, um, for sure. Mm. Absolutely. So Lohit said, Me get as good vo since. Ah, es geht mir gut auch. Danke schön. <laughs> well, geht mir gut auch. Um, Susan Hurst said, My other queen brand, talking about her. Ah, her, you're at Susan's yes. in Australia. Of course. Yes. Australia. Yes. Beautiful. Queen brand, that's Australian brand. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it is. What time is it there? Uh, uh, in Australia, Susan should be in bed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Australia, yeah, she's probably been. She's probably been at the. Uh, yeah, it's five past four in the morning yeah, in she's Melbourne. Been out, she's, she's been at the vanilla extract all day. <laughs> <laughs> she's probably now. She's going through everything else in the cupboard and see what else is. I know, Susan. I know what you're up to now. Getting all the stuff out, getting the vim out and the the daz, just in case. <laughs> you never know. You never do know. Some of those cleaning products are basically alcohol. <laughs> Don't. Try it, please don't try it. They're actually, and I'll tell you why not to try it, they actually, when they use um, like cleaning alcohol, they put a gagging agent into it, and gagging is to be, so they put something in there to stop people from drinking it. So don't be tempted to sort of try that stuff. However, if you want to decant it, if you want to actually distill it, I 
it's great, great alcohol. <laughs> These videos should come with a disclaimer. They do come with a disclaimer. <laughs> so Reese Williams is in and he's written... Reese! Hey, he's Reece. written in Chinese, but ah. I've translated it. Thank you, Google. He says, Merry Christmas, I found you were still alive, but I went to bed. Oh, Reese! <laughs> I don't know if that's what you meant to say. <laughs> Reese is one of my, one of my besties, my best mates. Sin Nam Pai Lok, Reese. Melissa says, hello, I'm from Turkey. Hello, Melissa. Good day, Melissa from Turkey. Um, Ania Abba says 54 likes from Maria Glow. I don't know what that is. Uh, pop those likes up for Mich Michelle and uh, Michelle loves. She's, she's got this uh, fixation with likes. <laughs> Myself, I'm not that bothered. I'm not that bothered. You don't have to hit the like for me. But Michelle, she cries herself to sleep at night <laughs> if there's not enough likes on the video. It's a dreadful true. thing to see. It is true, isn't it? it? Sobbing through the night. Sobbing through the night. Dan says Austria is gorgeous. Dan does? Yep. Is that our Dan? Our Dan. It is, it is beautiful. I, I liken it probably to sort of the Bavarian area or the Schwarz, you know, the, the, the Bavarian part of Germany also. And obviously Switzerland as well. But um, Austria, I've got a little bit of a soft spot for Austria. It's a, it's a beautiful place. And we were there a couple of years ago. A couple ago, of years ago. On our way down to Sicily. Mm -hmm. we, were, uh, we were up, we, we, we drove up um, to this beautiful, I don't know if, I don't think I put, ever put the vlogs on Steve's Kitchen, but they, they are up on YouTube somewhere. But we drove up into the Austrian mountains, which are stunning, mm -hmm. just stunningly mm -hmm. beautiful. Um, and we were staying in one of these beautiful little Austrian um, houses. It was actually someone's home. It was yes. a, like a, they like a rep, homestay. Uh, yeah, like a homestay. And it was picturesque, beautiful. It was, it was so modern because although the houses look really old and sort of, or traditional, not old, from the outside, inside, it's super well uh, insulated, super well heated, everything's like perfect inside. And we had these views of these gorgeous mountains, just a little bit of snow on the top because it was it was probably about October, mm. November, so before the big snow start to come. And Michelle and I were so happy there that we wanted just to stay there forever. And we couldn't because we had a, um, we had a citron Grand Picasso. We did. With little, t with, with good tyres, but too small a tyre. We had no snow chains. And I remember saying to the host, if we, if we don't leave soon and the snow comes, what will happen? She said, well, if the snow comes, you won't be able to get out of the town and you'll be stuck here for the whole, for the ho whole of the winter. And so, we only had our flip-flops. And we only had, uh, <laughs> we only had thongs, flip-flops. We were buying stuff as we were going we along. Only had, uh, oh, we had flip-flops, thongs, shorts, a few layers of t-shirts and I think a couple of jumpers that we bought from various sort of like shops <laughs> on the way up there so we were but it was crisp and beautiful you know mm. the air was like oh, I can't explain it Ricky the air is just like so clean and fresh and uh, Michelle and I just didn't want to leave but we had to leave in the end we sort of pulled ourselves away and we drove down to Sicily um, through the chocolate mountains yes. through the chocolate mountains down to Sicily and uh, we spent winter in Sicily about maybe two, two and a half, three years ago, I suppose, um, and uh, had a great time in sunny Sicily, where it was bloody freezing. And we had snow. <laughs> <laughs> we had snow, so we might as well have stayed up in Austria, but it was, it was beautiful. Yeah, Whisper was, SDI said, I love Austria, Austria. we go there often, cool. as does Dan. He said, yep, I love all the Germanic countries, just stunning. Yeah, they are beautiful. They and are beautiful. Uh, Lohit Joshi said, you should visit Salzburg and Graz. Please. I've been to Salzburg and I don't think I've been to Graz, but uh, I've been to Salzburg. I may have been to Graz. <laughs> he said, but nowadays it's very cold, minus 7 to minus 15. Yes, <laughs> this time of year, this is the place, this is the time when when you've really got to be well kitted up. You've got to have all the winter clothing. When I was a, when I was a young boy, is that a song, right? When I was a young boy? When I was a, is There's probably a, song? a thousand a song? songs with that. With that. <laughs> Just, just sing 300 of them. <laughs> <laughs> when I was young, when I was young, da, 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 yeah, that's yeah, that the one, one I was singing. <laughs> oh, no. da, 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 we'll have to wait. Que sera, sera. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when I was young, so I do go down tracks, um, we went to Austria as a family. You have noticed. <laughs> I have noticed. <laughs> no. We went to Austria as a family. And, and uh, um, who is it? Is it, who's in Austria at the moment? Um, I think that is uh, Lohit Joshi. I'm sure, sorry, I'm not. L-O-H-I-T. 
J-O-S-H-I. Lockett, yeah, Lockett. So, Lockett, I think um, you, you'll know this, anywhere in Austria, they used to have those plunge pools up in the mountains and people would get up in the mornings, right, the early morning, and you'd go and you'd find these mountain streams and they'd settle in sort of little uh, little pools and you'd, you'd basically strip off down to whatever you felt comfortable in. Generally, some sort of budgie smug smugglers and a pair of flip flops, but sometimes a little bit less than that. And you'd get into these sort of ice cold water pools and you'd plunge down into the water, and everything would like this an astringent, you know, like, like that. Yeah, everything shrunk down. Everything shrunk down. Yeah? <laughs> ice cold, and then you'd come back up, you'd go under the water, and you'd come back up, and you'd be fresh. I always remember just how invigorating that was. You like come up and you felt like you were almost dead yes. born. It was due, no, it's just like <laughs> everything comes to life. Like your whole, your whole body. You know, a lot of people do these polar bear uh, splash. You know, they do the polar bear splash in winter. My friend James in in um, uh, uh, Fun Foods, he, he does the polar bear splash every yes, year, he doesn't does, he? Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of like uh, it's it's a really invigorating thing to get into winter into winter waters. But the waters up in Austria are beyond winter waters they're just this side they're just flirting with being blocks of ice basically mm -hmm. so when you get in there you, when you come up your whole body goes red like mm -hmm. your face goes red your arms go red because the blood just like shoots to the surface mm -hmm. so it shoots to the surface of your face and your hands you come up looking like like a, you've been dipped in beetroot basically mm -hmm. because your body's going ah! it's trying to sort of um warm yourself back up i'm guessing mm. you can only do it you can't sit in there for an hour or two but, you know quick dip and out you would die basically if you stay <laughs> so an hour not long for hypothermia to say yeah and gordon says have you been to russia no you've been to russia rick not that i can recall rick and i don't remember going to <laughs> russia gordon but there have been the odd times rick and i can't remember what we did anyway mm. so we might have been we might have been and Lohit says, I'm a true vagabond. I've been to 47 countries. My favourite country is Malta and Hong Kong. Well, I've been to Hong Kong. I haven't been to Malta. I don't think I've been to Malta. No. Uh, so there are countries I've forgotten that I've gone <laughs> to uh, occasionally. Hong Kong is one of my favourite countries. So my whole old sort of hometown feels a little bit a part of me. It's always in Hong Kong. Um, but yes, we're, we're great travellers too. I think we're going to get the cheesecake out and we're going to give it a go. We'll have a little peek at it. If it looks like it's going to work, we're going to decorate it up. Rick, I and Michelle are going to have a slice of Christmas cheesecake and then we're going to let you guys go. What do you think? I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. Uh, all right. It's pretty cold. Okay. Okay. Here she is. Here's the cheese. Thank you, Michelle. That's okay. Let's just test it. There <laughs> she is, like a big polo mint or a, light sa a life saver. For my American friends. So, oh, just getting back to Austria. Lohit mm -hmm. says in Austria you can drink all kinds of water. It's pure, fresh, clean water. So we use tap water as well. Absolutely. Use as tap water. Yes, 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 yes. I know what you meant. So here is the cheesecake. Now the first thing I want to do, and I forgot to do it, Rick. I said to you I was going to put a little bit of oil on the inside of that glass, and that's the only thing I asked you to do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I asked oh, you to no, do. Oh no, no, we're getting blamed for that this time. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I asked. Um, so here's the cheesecake. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the inside of that glass. A little bit of hot water in a jug. Okay. Yes. What I'm going to do, I'll just dry the jug because I don't want to splash water on the cheesecake and ruin its beautosity. So that's a new word. <laughs> what? It's a great be word. Beautos I mean, beautosity. Coined a new phrase. So there we go. We're just going to pour the hot water into the glass. And what will happen, don't go too high, what will happen is the glass itself will start to just melt the, the butter in the biscuit at the bottom, hopefully melt the chocolate, I never thought about that, yeah. the chocolate wow. could end up clinging on to this, cling on to the starboard bow, they, they, they could end, end up sticking there. But what I'm hoping is if we get in there now, look Ooh, at that, look see, at that. it's turning around and up she comes. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Oh, it's there pretty she set. Is. <laughs> hey, that's all right. Oh. We can do all See? right. You would have never got that out of there if 
if you haven't abused the hot water trick. Okay, on the side here, release. Oh, please, let's just pray that this is going to come out for you guys. Oh. Oh, okay, so a little bit is sticking, but that's okay. We'll go, we can roll with that. I'm going to get a sharp knife now and just go around. Yes, it is a little bit on the soft side. I think it's going to hold together. I think, I think it's going to hold. Why am I getting... Why am I tapping something there? Somebody got rivets all the way around this oh, cheesecake. It released them, just didn't dropped. It? Okay, are you ready? Let's just come back a little bit so you can see it. <laughs> Look at this. Ba -bom, ba -bom, yes. The big reveal. Yes. Oh. I should have moved. I should have moved the uh, sound just in case it all disappeared. Mm, <laughs> over yeah. that. Oh, that is a bit thick. That biscuit, isn't it? <laughs> oh wow! It is a little bit thick. So, the next it's, thing we want to do... It's because you put extra bits, biscuits in to show you how to break them, that was why. <laughs> yes, it was. So, Lottie says, wow, it looks, it looks great. I am a chef too, and Joe says, looks amazing. Gordon says, nice. Nice, nice and easy does it. So, we are not finished yet, though. Cal the Gardener says, nice. Beautiful. We have got some fresh mango. I'm just going to dice it up down here <laughs> under the table. And then, oh, hang on, they can see the bag. <laughs> I'm going to put some, you can edit that out afterwards, can't you? So I'm going to get some fresh mango. Because when we're in Australia and make this at Christmas time, of course it's summer, so you get all the lovely fresh summer fruits. Oh, I am going not to. not quite so easy here. <laughs> I'm going to lay some mango around the top of this cheesecake. I'm going to decorate it as if it were a little wreath that I was going to put out on the door you know, for Christmas. We have got some fresh fruit, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Dan says, that looks amazing. I'm salivating here. Dan, this is beyond amazing. This is the Muriel best says, it looks delightful. Wish I lived cake. down the street. <laughs> I wish I'd actually got this mango out about an hour ago. Because <laughs> it's quite, it, it's like little ice cubes. But it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So we're going to put little pieces of mangoes. Now, normally, they look like bits of cheddar cheese. Don't, they? <laughs> don't say they look like bits of cheddar cheese, Stephen. Then people will think they, will. they look like bits they of cheddar will. cheese. And you will spoil the illusion. You didn't explain. I mean, you, we froze this because you wanted to make it set quicker. But you can actually freeze it and cut it up and eat it from frozen it's actually a very delicious dessert you like that and make this a frozen cheesecake like those awful um supermarket ones that don't taste as good as this does you can make this into a frozen cheesecake so you can take the whole cheesecake after it's set and you can freeze it and you can actually take it out and slice it up have it almost like a cheesecake ice cream which is delicious and then you don't have to eat it all at once yeah but you don't need to you can actually <laughs> just set it yes put fresh fruit any fruit that's in season you can put on to this and just what we're going to be doing, basically, let me just raise that uh, angle up a little bit so you can see there. Well, hopefully you can see. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so next we've got, I just read, could you just go and pick some fresh blueberries out of the garden? Oh yeah, no problem. All right, beautiful. So Rick's just outside now grabbing a few uh, fresh blueberries. And when he gets back in, I will, I will be... There you go, Steve. Thank you, mate. Leah says, oh, looks so yummy. Oh, damn, the bag's in again. <laughs> well, OK. Susan said, uh, my daughter makes a butte lime and white chocolate cheesecake. So, oh, uh, yes. I actually put white chocolate in this cheesecake most Christmases. So you can actually, if you check out my other, my full recipe, which I actually in the make it... Below. I make it with white chocolate in the cheesecake, which is absolutely... A complete beautiful thing to do. I should have taken this off the base first, but there we go. Chef's prerogative. So we're now putting a few. Dan says, do those blueberries grow in bags then? A bit, well, Rick's got a blueberry bush out in the garden, and it come, generally they come in uh, 250 gram bags off straight off the bush. <laughs> Don't they all? Are you done with the mangoes? Yeah, I've done with the mangoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, oh, wow. so this is looking beautiful, so it's kind of looking, you get the feeling, it's like a Christmas wreath. The next thing, we are actually using fresh pomegranates, because, I'll just get the pith out of there. The Gordon said, taking, stuff jacket potatoes for my tea. Taking the pith out of there, Rick. Taking the pith, yeah. Taking the pith out of there. So get the pith away, don't forget. And then, what we can do, 
I usually do it with my hands, but let's get some of these beautiful little diamonds, these gorgeous little jewels, and just sprinkle them over the top of the cheesecake, just to sort of pop some Christmassy goodness over there. It's, it's, oh, I tell you what I haven't got. Some mint. Some mint. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle knew it as soon as I said because normally I, if you've got mint, fresh mint in the garden then you would just pop some little sprigs of mint in here as well and it will really bring the green will just make it look even more Christmassy alright, starting to look good everybody now I have got fresh though not picked out of the garden Brenda said that is very festive indeed raspberries whoops, whoops. <laughs> that went down fresh raspberries, now I know Rick, would you like a raspberry? Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I won't say Oh, I home. got in with it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Brent, sorry, mate. I had to do it. Brenda says, use basil or celery. Ha ha. <laughs> Grease up over in the corner. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Rick. It was just, you did walk into it. So some fresh, some fresh raspberries, just sort of, Pop them down. What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Brenda said use basil or celery. Uh, yes, Brenda. Good idea. Basil. If we had some fresh... Some fresh herbs. Basil. We would do so. I'm going to pop some beautiful raspberries on there. That's looking good. It's looking good. It's looking... Now, Rick, can we get some photographs? Yeah, you are. Yeah, can we get some? But it's not, it's not my prettiest effort, but it still looks kind of good. You got your, your drizzle to go on yet? Uh, oh, yeah, look at that. So you see, that looks like a Christmas wreath. Look at it, everybody. How gorgeous is that? So I'm just going to ask my my resident photographer <laughs> to. Um, You've got some mistletoe, but mistletoe is poisonous, isn't it? It is. So mistletoe you better is not poisonous. use that. We'll put, that, we'll put that on Rick's piece. Yeah. <laughs> you can use some holly, but that's not so good either. No, that's looking good, isn't it? Yeah. That's looking, that's looking good. Is the sauce cool? It, it's, it's pretty cool good. Cool enough. Yeah. It's alright, it's not set. Well, it's not collapsed, no, no, is no, it? The, no, the sauce, look at the oh, sauce. Oh, yes, that looks good. Look at that. Yes. That is absolutely. And look, taste it. Mm. Well, that's good. Do you want to try that, Rick? Cover a little tiny finger in there. Put your finger in there and try that. Oh, it's still warm. You sure? Have a little try. Audience? Mm. Oh. A little try? A little try, just on the back of the spoon, oh, please. It's, really, it's quite strong tasting, isn't it? Yeah, it really intensifies the pomegranate mm. flavour. You're almost like a pomegranate molasses now. Mm. So, have we got any good photos, do you think, everybody? I think so. Reasonable. Yep. Yeah. 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 Right, so the next beautiful thing we're going to do, I'm going to bring you, you ladies and jelly, jelly spoons back in, and I, hopefully I'm going to get this. Come over this side, I'm going to get the. I'm Sue, gonna, I'm Sue gonna, says don't go hanging it on the front uh, door. Just yeah. going to drizzle this over the top. So you can take video or film, anybody, if you want to get some screen captures and. Do whatever you want to do, so we're just drizzling this beautiful pomegranate molasses or pomegranate syrup over the top of the cheesecake. I can tell you what, I know I'm salivating, and so if you, the audience, are not salivating, uh, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with you. Let's just get that dribbling down the, the edge of the cake as well, cheesecake. Okay, so we're almost done on the. Uh... Yeah, All right. Is that looking good, everybody? Is it looking good? I can't see it. The graphs. NL says hi and um, inspiring meal time with Latonia. Says I love cheesecake and that looks absolutely beautiful. Okay, there you are. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Be good. And Gordon says, looks divine. <laughs> Dan yeah. says, it's a masterpiece. <laughs> I'm, I'm well pleased, actually. It does look good. It does look good. We, we, we've done it in, in all the time in the live stream. We've literally started with just raw ingredients. And we've got a cheesecake there. If I can just lift it up off there to show you. We've got a cheesecake dripping in pomegranate molasses. It's, it's just 
I mean, what can go wrong? I can drop it. <laughs> yeah, put it wrong. down quick. <laughs> Sue John says, fabulous. Fabulous. Wow. Yes. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. See, so, it's healthy because it's got all that fruit on it. It literally has got the five a day, it's got all the fruits in it, it's got almost no calories at all. This is, a, this is close to a zero calorie meal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't that just be the most amazing thing ever? Leah says, oh, yum. So, who would like some? <laughs> the graph says, nice. Susan says, looks amazing. Muriel says, thanks to you all for this stream. Love from Massachusetts. Nobody wants any? Nobody's yeah. saying they want Anybody any yet. Anybody wants some? Oh, Brenda, me, me, me. Yeah. Michelle? <laughs> oh, yes, please. Yeah. Great. I could be tempted. You could be. You could be. Yeah. I'm going to have Joe some. says, oh, yes, please, if, lol. If none of you want any, that's fine. Sue John us. says me. <laughs> so we get a couple of... Uh, Oh, DJM, white plates. DJM me says um, low calorie version with hole in the middle. <laughs> it actually, the hole in the middle has reduced that by a third of the calories. Rick, like you said yes. the other day, what was, was it? Dan, wasn't was it? it Dan? No, yeah. Dan. Dan, what Dan <laughs> said the other day. It's a lower calorie, so you can have both halves. Yes, <laughs> it's a Weight Watchers cheesecake. Basically, that's the Weight Watchers cheesecake. You can have as much of this, it's got a third of the calories of a normal cheesecake. I absolutely guarantee it. <laughs> Muriel Absolutely. says me and Goonlove says tease and Susan says please and Dan okay. says lol. <laughs> what are we doing? A bit of uh watch the the tin oh, at the Rick bottom. Doesn't, Rick doesn't like it when I play with knives. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Mary says a thing of beauty and Skelchi says waving hi, watch the tin at the bottom. Yes, I am going to. I'm not it's got I've actually got a little bit of wax paper so it won't mark the tin. Let's get through the chocolate, get through the chocolate. Through, get oh. through that slab of biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> get through this sort of... If you use the right quantities of biscuit, it probably won't be as thick as that, but because we've where got some extra go? ones where, where, I've got to go somewhere. How, how big do we want these guys? Oh, just the, yeah. Yeah, about there? <laughs> yeah. Okay, get yeah. ready for the screen captures. Here she comes. It's coming up. Get ready for the screen captures. Whoops, I've got the paper. Hang on. Oh. Oops, got the paper. Paper get... won't be so good. No, I can't get under the paper. <laughs> okay, here she comes. Here she comes. Here she comes. Look, Look at that. that. Oh, she's pretty firm. She's pretty good. She's pretty firm. So on goes cheesecake. Um, Paula says, please can you save me a slice? I'm only down the road in Highworth. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Paula. <laughs> We're nowhere near high with Paula. <laughs> <laughs> we just moved yeah. up to Inverness. I'm so sorry. A uh, little bit of extra pomegranate molasses on there just to get it looking pretty. Um, there she is. Look at that. I feel like I feel like one of those uh, models at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all happy black music. Yeah. I want you to put it down. Michelle's been super patient. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna let Michelle oh, have the first. I get taste first. first oh. Then Rick, and then myself. So here we go. Michelle, come on. Come on. I got to come round for it. I've actually got to move. I'm not doing comments. A little fork. There we go. As well. Ricky, Ricky, let's get you oh, in. Yes. Let's give your slice another about the same. I might have to put it down just to get through the biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate. All right. Look at that. Oh, look at that piece, Rick. Oh, it's pretty good. Look at that. That's absolutely laden with fruit. Wow. And all sorts of loveliness. That's good. That's very good. Oh, you can taste come it. In. The... You've got to come into shop, Rick. Oh, yeah. There's no shine. No shine away. No shine away. You can taste the ginger and the mixed spice in the base. And oh, the chocolate. I almost the chocolate there. I almost oh, forgot good. about that. Mm, Let me nice. get a bit with some... Um... Is that good? Uh -huh. Well, that chocolate base is really mm. crunchy. Isn't Did it? the chocolate base work? Yeah. Did it? Yeah, you got through yeah. it. Well done. <laughs> you, you need a small pneumatic drill to um, <laughs> get through the chocolate. It's yeah. frozen. Yeah, it's just like... Okay, there's my mm. piece. I've got the smallest piece, obviously. Mm. <laughs> uh, Lohit said, "Send me a slice through YouTube. It might take uh, time, one continent to another continent." Uh, Susan said, "Love it. All the little love hearts." Mary says, "Yum." Gordon says, "Merry Christmas, everyone." Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> You can taste it. The chocolate's good, isn't it? So look, I've got, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a little bit of raspberry, fresh raspberry, a little bit of cheesecake. I'm going to I'm going to bury down into the. Oh, it's not that hard. It's not too bad, no. Val says, "Wow, looks yummy." 
Nobody can talk. <laughs> that's as good as it looks. So if you're if you want something a little bit unusual, some alternative to Christmas pudding perhaps this Christmas, something that's a third of the a third of the calories cheesecake. Alternative or as well as. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting there. No, I'm getting there. Or indeed if you want just a cheesecake with your Christmas pudding and mince pies. <laughs> This Sue John one. says, soft Christmas dinner, just have this. Yeah. <laughs> I second that. And Brenda says, hang on, I've got to pick my tongue up off the floor. Mm. And Laurie says, immaculate, guys. Mm. <laughs> That's really good. It is really good. Mm. Come, uh, 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 Michelle, come and join Rick, can, We'll let Rick sit off camera and enjoy his piece mm. of okay. okay. Michelle and I are going to sit here. <laughs> But if we both sit here eating, we have to alternate eating, <laughs> otherwise nobody would be able to talk. <laughs> so, how is everybody? How? Oh yeah, I get the spices as mm. well. You get mm. the gingerbread base in there. I hope you all have a really good Christmas this year. I hope you um, you eat. Can I say it? I hope you ignore all yes. the all the all the bad advice that's going around. Just enjoy yourself enjoy with your Christmas. family. Yes. Just have a great time. Um, Turn off the TV, yeah. get rid of your newspapers, stay on social media, watch Steve's Kitchen, talk with us whenever you can. We will be back before Christmas. Yeah, we try to lift your spirits. Um, just have a really good time, as I say. Um, if any of people are worried about it not getting back to the, the, the new normal, it is the new normal. It's normal. Yes. Just get on. Yes. If, you, if you ignore it, it doesn't exist, all right? So get on. Have a great time over Christmas. Uh, make some of the recipes that's on my Christmas playlist. Um, we'll be doing some more live streams, won't we? Yeah, we'll, we'll, be have, having a, yeah. we'll be having a bit more of a go. Um, so Rick's going to come back in to shop in a minute. I'm just going to check that chat. comments mm. that are come flying up there. Mm. So, yeah, <laughs> just, 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 just have a good Christmas. Don't spend too much. Don't buy big presents for your family and friends. Little fun things. You know, just put a smile on people's faces. Don't waste too much money. Come out of the other end of Christmas not feeling as if you're broke. Um, come out of the other end of Christmas feeling like you've, you've made some food. Um, Rick, we're going to be having goose this Christmas. We're going to be having... Uh... The first time. <laughs> I just told you not to overindulge, and I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We've got, we're going to have a ham. We're going to have a beautiful... Um, uh, Beef joint. I'm going to be. I'm going to be treating Rick to some of the best Christmas gravy you've ever had. Uh, we're going to be having some homemade um, stuffing with uh, marron chestnuts. Chestnuts. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be having a, a chestnut and cranberry stuffing. There's a lot going on. So Muriel said, "Perfect advice, Steve." And Sue John said, "Just eat and be merry." Eat, drink, yes, and be merry. Um, yes. And Dan says, "Well said, that man." And thank three of you that was amazing merry christmas everyone right i'm um, nothing sorry and it says when you come to europe austria let me know we'll cook amazing food for you and 10 different types of cakes please let me know before austrian food oh, oh i want to be <laughs> i want to be there in my lederhosen <laughs> slapping my thighs and eating austrian food it'd be so good um, um val says great advice how are you keeping slim with all this food well, we are trying to, we're not keeping it, <laughs> we're actually not, but we are actually going to be doing and talking about this over, over Christmas and after Christmas, how we are watching um, what we eat by having an, uh, you know, an alternate day where we don't, we don't eat to an excess. And um, so far, although we've had really good food this last week, I haven't put on an ounce. Michelle, Rick, I don't think any of us yep. have put any more weight on than we were doing couple of weeks ago when we were just binge eating everything so um <laughs> and Lohe said do you have any other social media like facebook page or something instagram everything is at steve's, steve's kitchen. kitchen facebook at steve's kitchen um twitter don't at, really yeah, use but yeah. at steve's kitchen um rick um is uh, rick van man variety channel rick everything mm -hmm. on your social media is rick van man yeah pretty much um, so you can check out rick there uh, any of my friends that are watching this, they want to put links down to their channels down below, you're welcome to do it. It might get flagged by YouTube, but I will 
uh, let it through. You'd be welcome to share your social media down there. You might have to share it in the comments when this is finished because I don't think it will let it go through on this mm. chat. We will mm. see. You can try. Yeah, best put it on the, the video after the comments. And Val if you, if says, you've enjoyed today, hit the thumbs up for Michelle. Yes. She loves to. We don't want her crying to sleep tonight. <laughs> hit the thumbs up. <laughs> and Val says, goes to show what good home cooked food can do then. Because Simple. Just, you know, food, just watch occasionally what you're eating. Although the digestive biscuits were the one thing in here that was probably semi processed, although I know it's only really got oatmeal. You meat. have made cheesecake on your channel with. Fresh biscuits, you know, yeah, with, yeah, with... Yeah, if you want to make, actually, uh, several of my cheesecakes I make, I don't use digestives, but it will taste like digestives. We're just using wholemeal flour, maybe oat flour, a little bit of sugar. We're doing it all from scratch, and it really works well. Um, but, yes, this is a completely unprocessed food. Uh, it's great fun. Uh, just enjoy yourselves at Christmas. Have a good time. And uh, have I got anything else I want to add? I want to thank those of you that have supported us on, on uh, Patreon that still continue to support us. Um, I want to fa thank um, uh, Tony, Tony O'Malley again. Yes. I know uh, I thanked you in the last video, Tony, for the PayPal uh, support that you put through to the channel. You're always so, so sweet to it, Michelle and I, and it's appreciated. Um, DJ Me says, my mum and dad said to me today, where's that Steve's Kitchen Christmas cake you normally make for us every year? Yeah, get and make it. Where is it? And Gordon says, nine sleeps to go. Nine sleeps to go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody that just watches the channel yes. and gets involved and supports us. Um, I know we take you on a merry dance sometimes. It's not always Steve's Kitchen. Sometimes I take you off to sort of odd places and things. It's just the life Michelle and I are living at, the t at this moment. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, it's just, you know, life, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, have fun. Uh, we're going to sign off? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, when life questions. gives you lemons, you can, you can make a lemon cheesecake. You can make, <laughs> lemon, <laughs> lemon, <laughs> make lemon cheesecake. So from Rick, Michelle, and myself, ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Have a beautiful Christmas. I should stand that side. I've got my Christmas yes, cousins. Yes, you should. Um, I'm even I'm in red today. <laughs> We will see you we'll again. Be back before Christmas. We will. We do another live stream. We've got some other recipes. We've got to do the Christmas um, pet treats as yes. well, which is coming up yes. soon. So don't forget, if you've got dogs, if you've got cats, you can always make them a beautiful treat for Christmas. We'll be sharing some recipes for that very shortly. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video. Be good. Bye. We've got to lean over and push it off its side. <laughs> <laughs>